We've been essentially in post-production since week six of the shoot. We've essentially been turning over elements to um, sound effects. There's an incredible amount of sound design work that's required to develop these characters, not just visually, but how they sound. <laughs> That's been going on for several months now, and we've been turning over materials to John Williams. And we start scoring the beginning of May, and the dubbing process will continue for the whole month of May, right up to the last minute. This is the first movie I've ever done with John Williams where John did not get to see the picture before he began writing the music. This has never happened to us before. John is writing the music in a semi-vacuum. When he first sat down to watch the movie, I only had six to 12 reels complete. So he could only see six reels. So he saw 60 minutes of the movie and began writing. He never saw the last 60 minutes of the movie. But he said that there was a, he had enough of an experience in the first 60 minutes that he knew exactly how to write it. But I'll be absolutely blown away when I hear the first note because I have no preconceptions of what the music's going to be like. Except John keeps reassuring me it's going to be really different than anything he's done before. It is true that Stephen's other space epics are all very warm and welcoming in terms of the visitors. That really is... Uh, a change for him to go in War of the Worlds where you have these machines coming that bring the aliens here that are so destructive. Uh, an interesting deviation for Stephen. And so it creates a different musical opportunity and a different role for the orchestra and for the music. And there are a few s sections in there, a few cuts to the alien machines where the orchestra does a grand gesture of the classic monster film. But we just sort of doff our cap to give a little referential nod to the genre. But I think, I mean, for example, the intersection scene where the alien machine first emerges is, I think, one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. And especially where we first have the bodies being evaporated, I guess you could say, by the strike of the aliens. We have orchestral gestures and sound effects, but some of them also have a women's chorus. There are women making a kind of a, a, a glissando that goes up, like almost like a shriek. The addition of something human, even though we don't exactly know that it's a, a women's chorus, gives us some feeling here that just a zap doesn't quite have. You know, so you recognize some pain in it, even though the, the victims are not privileged enough even to say, ouch, you know, they're gone before they can say that. And it happens again at the end of the fairy sequence, you know, when people are plucked out of the water. Again, the orchestra and percussion will do effects, but for one or two of them, we have also the women. Humanizing the experience, so to speak. Maybe you'll be okay. Maybe you'll get lucky and they'll train you as their pet. You know, feed you, train you how to do tricks. You should have listened! There are some male voices in some sections of the basement because we have some very interesting sound effects for the probe and also for the aliens themselves. But if you dig really deeply into that sound track and music track, there are men singing in that uh, it's even below the Russian bass. It goes into almost the register of Tibetan monks, you know, which is the lowest kind of pitch that our bodies are able to make. And we have a group of the men doing that very, very softly. The film begins musically with an electronically assembled 
group of sounds that I put on paper. I would just write it like you would write an orchestra score, describing what I think the sounds can be. And then we would, with synthesizer, develop those sounds and put it together step by step. Only two places, the beginning, which accompanies the Morgan Freeman narration. No one would have believed in the early years of the 21st century that our world was being watched by intelligences greater than our own. And equally, at the end of the film, the end of the Boston Street, and the camera proceeds along the limb of, we think, what, a dead tree. And one of the buds in the tree is alive, and we see that the life is there. And you hear the, the cyclically closing, again, Morgan Freeman's voice. And again, the orchestra sort of morphs into electronics. For neither do men live nor die in vain. Get in with us. I'm not fooling around. I got a busy day ahead of me. Close it. and the role of the orchestra really as they begin to drive away from the city is to provide a propulsion that is pulling us forward and helping us to try to escape, although there isn't any escape. You saw we're under attack! By <laughs> And the orchestra has the same primary function in what is a fantastic scene, I think the ferry scene. What the orchestra can do is provide this driving beat, a propulsion, a pulse that sometimes we hear, sometimes we don't hear, but it's always there and we can feel it. And when, when there's room for it to come forward and push us forward, we would do that. It's probably the most complicated sequence, which could point to the sort of cooperation between editing, in this case, Michael Kahn and myself. Stephen is always kind of in the middle and hovering between the two. The music will do this, and the editing will do that, and, and make his suggestions. But that is a very interesting scene.
certainly a very memorable image, is when Ray's character comes out of the destroyed house and he sees the crashed plane there. And that music was not intended to be there. That music was part of what I call the epilogue, which comes at the very end of the end credit of the film. And Stephen came and he said, you know, the trumpet trio, he just, where well, the trumpets are playing. Yes, yes, so we're just beginning in the middle of that epilogue. He said, how do you think it would be for when Ray comes out and he sees the plane? But I thought it was an inspired idea, actually, to put that epilogue, which I wrote for some other purpose, that I hadn't expected to go there. I thought it was a wonderful solution to that moment. Down here. It's not the first time he's done that. I mean, he has a very, very good suggestion of what to go where. So that the working relationship is comfortable and it's fun, but I have to think also probably at some level more efficient. It's very strong. Uh -huh. And Rachel screams. And I don't know what the sound is going to be for the, for the other thing, but mm -hmm. I'm, I may be a hair early. Maybe the screen should lead it. Uh -huh. I'm not sure about Maybe it. Maybe the screen should lead the music coming in, you know? Possibly. Uh -huh. I, I, don't, I don't think we'll know uh -huh. that you get all, everything up. Right. Right. But I'm a little, you're going to see it's probably a hair early, it's with the light. Right. And uh, we see the light is over on the left side of yes. the screen above, and yes. we start right on that. It's yes. the sound effect with there, and then she screams. You right. Know? I think that'd be kind of interesting. So it, it precedes it, in yeah, other words. Yeah, and it doesn't have to, but, uh, you know, because it's easy mm. to slide it. That sounds good, though. And I feel the beneficiary of something very special. In my case, with Steve, is also working with a great friend, you know, just like a family member.